Hey guys, Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend. I wanted to talk to you a bit today about blood sugar levels and how to keep your blood sugar levels healthy. Uh, there are a lot of different issues uh, related to blood sugar, things like uh, insulin resistance and diabetes and hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia, lots of different things that can get a little bit confusing at times. So we're gonna try to give you uh, a good overview of all those general issues and then in future videos we'll go a little bit more in depth into each of these topics. So today we're just going to give you kind of a blood sugar 101, a little bit of an intro to blood sugar so you guys have a good sense about how to keep your blood sugar healthy. So why is blood sugar important? Well, because blood sugar balance in the body uh, is one of the most important things for your health. One of the biggest sources of inflammation for most people these days is blood sugar imbalance, where they eat foods that spike their blood sugar repeatedly and it leads to things like insulin resistance, diabetes, um, excess sugar in the blood, which is, which is toxic, uh, as we'll talk about, all sorts of uh, bad types of inflammation in the body. Another reason that blood sugar is really important is that it's directly related to or directly impacts cortisol levels. Now, if you've never heard of cortisol, that's okay. Cortisol is basically your body's master stress hormone. Uh, whenever you're dealing with a stressful situation, your body releases cortisol to help you deal with that situation. And one of the things cortisol does is, is it releases more blood sugar into the blood. So if you're eating a high blood, if you're eating a high uh, sugar carbohydrate laden diet and you are under lots of stress, your blood sugar is going to be really, really high, and it could potentially lead to insulin resistance. On the flip side. If you have very low cortisol, you can have uh, low blood sugar and, and, and things like that. So blood sugar is directly related to and it directly impacts cortisol levels, which really impacts a lot of different things in our body. Now, the reason I decided to do this video today was really two main things that kind of came up for me recently. One was I saw this study that came out September 8th of this year that said 50% of Americans are currently either diabetic or pre-diabetic, which is just completely and totally insane. We're getting to the point now where diabetes and pre-diabetes are the new uh, normal, as it were, but there's nothing normal about having diabetes. There's nothing uh, healthy about having uh, diabetes when it's something that you can prevent. Now, obviously there are types of diabetes that are uh, genetically inherited and that's, that's a very different thing, but the vast majority of these types of diabetic cases that we're encountering today are due to lifestyle factors that are entirely preventable. So while diabetes may be common, it is not normal. Uh, so that was number one. Number two is I've been, I've been talking with, with people who have been doing nutrition consultations with me about high and low blood sugar and how that impacts uh, their lives and you know once people get their blood sugar in line they say that tends to help a lot of their symptoms whether they're feeling you know tired after meals or shaky uh, or you know feeling like they don't have any energy in the morning getting those blood sugar levels under control makes a huge difference in making them feel healthy again so let's just talk briefly about how your body processes carbohydrates and sugar so Let's just be clear up front, this is a very schematic overview of how this works. There's lots of different processes going on, but let's just kind of boil it down to its basics. So what happens is you eat some meal. Typically some meal is going to contain, contain some form of carbohydrate, whether it's you know low carbohydrate or high, it doesn't really matter. There's going to be some blood sugar spike. Your blood sugar goes up. Your body doesn't like it when there's excess sugar in the blood because excess sugar in the blood for too long can be toxic. So your body releases insulin, which is a storage hormone, to bring that blood sugar back down to normal. Uh, and then once it does that, one to two hours after eating your meal, your blood sugar is typically back to normal. For most people, two hours is pretty much going to be the time frame. Now, the problem is that if you eat uh, food that's super carbohydrate laden, like if you have a bagel and orange juice in the morning, your blood sugar is going to spike, your body's going to desperately release insulin to try to control that, and then it's going to go crash. And then by the time you get to lunch, you're going to be starving for some new food, and then you have your, you know, your sandwich for lunch, and then, you know, the blood sugar spikes up again, and then crash, and then you have your pasta for dinner, and then up, oh, and then crash, right? So you're on kind of this energy roller coaster throughout the day because you're eating excess carbohydrates. There's nothing wrong with carbohydrates. There's nothing wrong with insulin re release. All these things can be good under the right circumstances. There's something wrong with excess carbohydrates and perpetual insulin release. 
one of the things that happens is if you eat too many carbohydrates too many times and your insulin goes through this or your insulin and your blood sugar go through this roller coaster over time your body actually loses the ability to respond to insulin and that's when you become insulin resistant and pre-diabetic and eventually diabetic and these things are really 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 not good you you can't lose weight properly uh your, you know your blood sugar stays perpetually high which is very toxic so those are really 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 not good things so hopefully that gives you a little bit of understanding of what happens when you just eat a normal meal and why you would want to avoid your blood sugar going on a roller coaster. It's fine if it's got little spikes and then kind of dips back down to normal, nothing wrong with that, but we don't want it to go on a roller coaster throughout the day. That's, that's a little bit too much, okay? So what are signs of blood sugar dysregulation? Well, we're going to talk about some symptoms that you might recognize and uh, signs in the blood work that you might see. Now, an important thing to say symptoms never uniquely pick out any one condition. You always have to talk to your doctor or healthcare professional to figure out what it is you're dealing with. You could crave sweets and still be dealing with something that has nothing to do with blood sugar dysregulation or diabetes. So it's important to say up front, these symptoms do not uniquely pick out blood sugar dysregulation or diabetes. That being said, there tend to be a cluster of symptoms that can indicate or at least put you in the possible direction of realizing that there might be a blood sugar issue. So if you're constantly craving sweets, you know, I have people tell me all the time, oh my God, I've got this gigantic sweet tooth that I just can't satisfy. Um, you know, that's a sign that, that things might be going wrong. Uh, if, you're, if you're constantly, you know, irritable and you feel like you're just uh, always in, in a bad mood, that can be a sign that things aren't quite where they need to be. Uh, peaks and valleys of energy. You hear people say this all the time, you know, they have the two o'clock slump or, oh my God, it's just horrible to get up in the morning or at night when they've kind of had some bad food. They feel like, oh, I'm just, you know, uh, up and ready to go and I don't feel like I can go to sleep. Peaks and valleys of energy uh, are, are some signs that blood sugar might be a little bit dysregulated. You want to have a little bit more consistent, even energy throughout the day rather than kind of these gigantic peaks and, and valleys, okay? Now, if you get your blood work done, uh, there can be some signs in there as well. Now, again, you gotta work with a doctor here, healthcare professional, uh, nothing we're saying here is meant to diagnose, treat, cure, anything like that, anything medical. It's just uh, some general information that you can discuss with your doctor. But if you have a fasting blood sugar greater than 100, that can be a sign that you might be starting to tip into the direction of uh, insulin resistance and uh, a place where your blood sugar is not balanced properly. Most people get that tested with the regular yearly blood work. Another great marker that if you can get your doctor to run, it's fantastic, it's called hemoglobin A1C. It's a measure of your average blood sugar over the course of three months. And this is much better than fasting blood glucose. Fasting blood glucose is like someone taking a, a picture of you at one moment in the day and saying, that's your mood for the entire day. It's just a, it's a teeny, 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 teeny snapshot of what your blood sugar is actually like over the course of a period of time, whereas A1C is a much better uh, snapshot of your overall uh, blood sugar status. Now, it's not perfect, but generally, if you have an A1C that's over 5.7, you could be going into the direction of uh, insulin resistance and, and blood sugar issues. Perhaps the best way to test your blood sugar, uh, especially if you don't have any problem pricking your finger, and using a blood glucometer at home is post-meal blood sugar. Uh, if you have a post-meal blood sugar that after one hour of eating or two hours of eating is over 140, that's a really good sign that your blood sugar is not in a good place. So that's perhaps the best uh, way to test really what your carbohydrate tolerance is and what your blood sugar levels are because that's uh, on the ground. That's right there, right then, and you can test it over multiple days and you can really get a good sense of where you're at. So how do you keep your blood sugar levels um, under control? Uh, eat nutrient-dense real whole food. You know, one of the reasons why we have the situation where 50% of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic is they're eating these uh, super carbohydrate-laden, super processed foods that just spike your blood sugar completely out of control. There is no food in nature that spikes your blood sugar anywhere near as much as you know something like uh, a gigantic 64 ounce thing of, of soda. Um, there are foods in nature that you know are carbohydrate laden, but they're not going to spike your blood sugar anywhere near as much. So the first step is eat nutrient dense, real whole food. If your great grandparents didn't recognize it as food, 
probably not food. Avoid processed foods and excess carbohydrates. Again, this is really the main source of what's giving us issues these days. There are other issues like excess stress and lack of sleep, both of which can contribute to blood sugar imbalances. However, a lot of what we're dealing with is excess processed foods and carbohydrates. On average, Americans eat 300 to 400 grams of carbs a day. That is completely and totally insane. And like I said to you in my last video uh, about, about uh, carbohydrates a few weeks back, you know, a healthy person can consume anywhere between 100 and 200 grams of carbohydrates a day from nutrient dense real whole food, but getting 300 to 400 grams of carbohydrates a day, uh, most of them coming from processed foods and excess carbohydrates, is really gonna be a recipe for disaster. Uh, and then the last way you can, you can keep your blood sugar levels under control is buying a blood glucometer. Um, these aren't terribly expensive at a local CVS or Walgreens or something like that. It's really the test strips that are a little bit more costly, but you can get, you know, 10 to 20 for relatively cheap. If you don't have any problem pricking your finger and testing this at home, this is a fantastic way to measure your blood glucose levels. Not only that, it actually tells you your individual car carb tolerance. What do I mean by that? I mean, some people can eat a white potato and their blood sugar only goes up to you know 140 post meal or maybe even 130 and they feel okay. Other people eat a white potato and their blood sugar skyrockets up to 180 or 190. Everyone's got a little bit of a different individual carb tolerance. And what's great about this is it tells you what your carb tolerance is like to the meals that you actually eat on a daily basis. Not just fasting, but the meals that you actually eat on a daily basis. And that's very, very, very telling. So if you can take your blood glucose before you eat a meal and then two hours after, see if it's returned to normal, that's gonna be a really good way to tell if you are in a healthy blood sugar range. Now, let's talk a little bit about hyper versus hypoglycemia. So hyperglycemia, hyper just uh, meaning, you know, that your, your, your blood sugar is high, uh, glycemia meaning, you know, of or relating to sugar, hyper meaning high. So hyperglycemia is your blood sugars uh, too high. Uh, this is what most people are dealing with in our society today. That's di diabetes is a type of hyperglycemia. Uh, what do you want to do if you are dealing with hyperglycemia? Generally reducing meal frequency, uh, instead of having six or seven meals a day, having something like uh, two to three or maybe even four throughout the day, is going to be a way to deal with higher blood sugar and trying to eat fewer carbs, obviously. Now, you don't need to always limit your carbs for the rest of your life. If you're eating nutrient-dense real whole food, you will probably, assuming you're not you know, uh, type one diabetic, you'll probably get to a point where your blood sugar will get under control because things like type two diabetes and hyperglycemia are fully reversible if you catch them in time so you can get to a point where you can start eating carbs again but it's going to take your body a while to get used to eating carbs and having a healthy relationship with them so initially trying to eat fewer carbs is going to be better than not what if you have hypoglycemia what if you're someone who uh, can feel dizzy from time to time just kind of sitting down who gets these energy slumps who's had episodes of, of fainting or passing out while working out someone who when they lay down and then uh, come uh, stand back up, feel like they're getting dizzy and their blood pressure, you know, their blood pressure doesn't rise correspondingly. If that's uh, something that sounds similar to you, it could be the case that your blood sugar is too low. In this case, what you might want to try again, always consulting with your doctor or healthcare professional, is increase your meal frequency uh, and eat more protein. Protein has an incredible blood sugar stabilizing effect. On the body uh, and it's not just useful for hypoglycemia but it can be useful for hyperglycemia okay all right so some final thoughts to stay healthy keep your blood glucose numbers in control again this is one of the biggest sources of inflammation that we're dealing with today you may not view it as a stress on your body when you eat you know uh, a couple slices of pizza or maybe a little orange juice or something like that you might not see it as like sitting in traffic or your boss yelling at you at work, but your body does. It is a stressful event to your body when your blood sugar goes like this, and then your body has to desperately release insulin to try to bring that back down to normal. Remember, blood sugar is toxic in the body, in your blood, in excess levels. So your body really desperately tries to keep blood sugar in a normal, healthy range, which fasting is about 70, uh, to 95, so, you know, some people say uh, the upper limit's 90, but somewhere in that range. So 
to stay healthy and minimize inflammation, you really have to try to keep that blood sugar in control. It is a, a stress on your body if your body has to constantly deal with your blood sugar going up really, really high, and then they desperately have to release insulin to bring that back down. Uh, and at the end of the day, you're gonna notice a consistent theme here with all our videos, real whole food is the key to blood sugar control. Uh, there are you know tips and tricks and little tweaks that you can make here and there to kind of make this more effective, but in general, real whole food is gonna do a lot more things to control uh, your blood sugar and keep it in line, and it will keep you a lot healthier than eating uh, processed foods and excess carbohydrates. Okay guys, so I hope that's given you a bit of a sense of how to keep your blood sugar in line and giving you a little bit of a sense of how your body processes excess carbohydrates and what to do about it. Uh, this is Robbie from CrossFit uh, South Bend signing off. I'll see you guys next time.